Hey everyone, I'm Mine, and welcome back to another episode of Bricks by Mine Monthly. I know it's a simple name, but I think that's the name I'm going with for this series. But this is the series I do once a month where I answer questions from you guys, as well as do little mini reviews of LEGO sets, and talk about any LEGO news or updates in my life or just anything I want to discuss. Now you can see I'm here at my college campus, but I accidentally left my good camera at home over Thanksgiving break, so I'm using my phone camera for this video, which is not something I've really done before. At least specifically for like face cam stuff. So hopefully the camera quality is okay, I don't know, we'll just have to see. But we're just working with what we got. I also got some feedback in the last episode you guys want to see the question displayed on screen when I was reading it out so I'm going to try to do that for this one. All right so the first question is coming in from at reg regior. <laughs> favorite Kai moment. My favorite Kai moment's a small one but it's an SOG when Lloyd's like off with Harumi getting the uh, Oni mask and they figure out that Harumi is the quiet one they go to confront her and Harumi comes out of the temple and I forget the exact dialogue that he says but Kai, but Kai says something really funny that's just so full of personality about how Lloyd's the one that does the talking and I don't know it's just such a funny yet heartfelt moment. I genuinely really enjoy that scene. Next question comes in from Dominic Swiatek 3300. Your general thoughts after the TTV Tommy and Jason Q&A. Did you find anything especially interesting? Did any of his answers slash ideas stand out to you in any way? The thing that stuck with the most after that Q&A was his answer about the Overlord because personally I've never really liked the Overlord as a villain. I've just found him kind of boring. And I was also never really sure of the place he had in the Ninjago world because there's the whole Oni versus Dragon thing. So what was the Overlord? So Tommy's idea about how the Overlord is the first Pinjutsu Master's Oni side that he separated from himself because he was ashamed of it. And then the Great Devourer biting Garmnon put the Oni blood back into him. That is such a cool idea that I honestly really love. And I think it makes me appreciate the Overlord as a character a lot more. And I know Tommy's answers aren't officially canon, but as he's the creator of the show, I really hope they never do anything to contradict that. Because I think that's a great idea that I hope is like considered canon going forward. Have I seen Black Panther Wakanda forever? No, I have not. I will probably watch when it comes to Disney+, Plus, but it's a very long movie and I'm in a very busy period of uh, the year right now. So I don't really have the time right now to go out to a theater and see a three hour movie. I have seen the Gardens of the Galaxy holiday special though and I quite enjoyed that and you said do you plan on getting sets based on them I mean the only set I know of that exists based on that is the advent calendar which I do have I'll begin opening that tomorrow but yeah I love the guardians and the holiday special is a lot of fun and the most important question of all how's Matthew's cat doing from what I've seen pretty good <laughs> whenever me and Matthew call his cat is always biting him so I guess that's a good sign <laughs> all right next question comes from creatively devoid mpen now they have a lot of questions here so I'm just going to pick a few of them out just ones that stand out to me as like being very unique stuff I haven't answered before so first what would you say was the personal peak of Ninjago, like where the sets in the show were absolutely amazing without nearly any flaws. Now, if we're talking about both sets and show coinciding to be wonderful, I would have to say either Skybound or Hunted, because both of those have pretty flawless sets and have really fantastic shows. Now, here's the question I've been waiting for. Thoughts on Pokemon Scarlet and Violet? Also, which of the new Pokemon are your favorite design-wise or gameplay-wise? Now, I've been playing a lot of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. That's part of why I've not uploaded much in the past week or so. I've just been really enjoying that game. I know the internet is dividing on them because they are quite buggy games. Now, I will say a lot of what you see online is not the common experience like don't get me wrong there is bugs i have experienced bugs but this like constant zero frames per second is not what the game is it does lag every now and then there are kind of annoying bugs every now and then but it didn't really take away from the core gameplay at all i still really enjoyed it in terms of which new Pokemon I really like, I guess these are spoilers for new Pokemon for Scarlet and Violet, so if you guys are Pokemon fans and you haven't played the game yet, you might want to skip this part of the video. Just skip ahead like probably a minute, I'll be done talking about it by then. But here, I love Plod Sire, I think he's awesome. Sandy Shocks is easily my favorite Paradox Pokemon, I just think he's so goofy. I'm pretty happy with how Meow Scarada turned out, that's not the way I would have designed the Pokemon, but even so, that doesn't make it not cool. And Garganicle is another one of my favorites. But yeah, you can see I'm all in on the Pokemon. I even got like the special Scarlet and Violet Switch. I could sit here and talk about all the Pokemon I like all day though. I think those are those are my absolute favorites of the generation. But obviously, no, not everyone's interested in that, so I will <laughs> I'll cut the Pokemon conversation there. Alright, next question is gonna come from Scar X2000. What do you think of Nexo Knights as a theme? Is there any missed potential that LEGO should have fixed? I think the biggest thing with Nexo Knights is it was trying too hard to be Ninjago. And I think that's part of where Monkey Kid succeeded where Ninjago failed. Because if you think about it, Nexo Knights had like the five characters, all of them had the same exact art archetypes as Ninjago characters. And while I like the whole team aspect, and I think it's good for kids to be able to pick their favorites, it's like if you reduced all the Ninjago characters down to one trait, took them from three-dimensional characters to one-dimensional characters, and I think that's the biggest thing. There wasn't something for kids to latch onto. I will say I've only watched the first episode next to Nights, but it just didn't really hook me, because the characters were not appealing in the same way the Ninjago characters were from the pilots. So I think rather than trying to create the next Ninjago, next Night should have tried more to be its own thing. The next one comes in from Toy Mayhem 1228 Now that the January Avatar sets are revealed, 
world, what do you think of them? Now, I guess those I've not talked about in the channel yet, but in short, eh, they seem fine to me. I think they seem better overall than the first wave, however, way more overpriced than the first wave, which I didn't even know was possible. The only one I'm personally interested in is the Big Whale. I think that one looks really cool and very unique. I like how it's a combination of brick built and molded parts, and I'd like to see LEGO do more creatures like that, but I'm not sure if I'm going to end up getting that one just because it is so expensive, and I don't really have plans to see the movie. I might end up seeing it at some point, but yeah, I'm not deep down the Avatar hole. But yeah, I think the builds at least seem good over all the minifigures seem interesting. I really like that Water Village set too. I think that one looks really pretty. But again, I think the prices are just absurd on them. So yeah, not for me. Next, we have a question from Brick Bob. Have your thoughts on Crystallized changed since you made your initial review? I wouldn't say they've changed that much. Those initial opinions were definitely difficult because obviously I had so many people online talking about their opinions. And I think me liking the season was a bit more of a controversial one. I need to go back and rewatch before properly formulating a new opinion. But I think I do really like it. Like, is it the perfect season? No. Would I have done the finale that way? No. But especially after talking with Tommy and everything, I respect it for what it is, and it was fun, and I don't know, that's what's most important to me. It's not like the most original, most unique story of all time, but it was fun, and I thought it did the characters I enjoy well, and there was a lot of really good moments, especially in between each individual character. So while it's definitely not perfect, and it's far from my favorite season, I think I still really like Crystallize for what it is. Next question comes in from King Studs. Do you wish that the Ninjago 2023 core skeletons will be in the show? Now, I don't think they should be the main villain in the show, because they are for core, but I think it would be cool if they just sort of alluded to the fact that they existed. Like, maybe have them appear in the background, maybe have them as, like, a recurring, just, like, lower-tier villain, like the mechanic used to be before Crystallized, or something like Misdemeanor. But I think they should exist in the show's canon, but not be important to the show's canon, so that way people playing with the sets could still, like, make up, like, okay, this is how I imagine this this fight between them happened. Because I think that's the perfect middle ground. I was really hoping they would do that with the snakes, and they just didn't. And I still doubt they'll do it with the skeletons, but it would be nice to see. All right, next we have a few questions from GS Lego Motions, who has quite a few, so again, I'm just going to pick out a few that I find the most interesting. Why is Zane your favorite ninja? So this is actually a really funny story. So number one, I always liked ice characters. I still love anything that's an ice character. Ice King from Adventure Time, Elsa from Frozen, Frozone from um, The Incredibles. Like, they're always my favorite character in any piece of media. So right off the bat, I liked Zane for that reason, but the actual main reason I chose Zane to be my favorite character before the show even started, right, I pre-ordered the 2011 sets in 2010, that's how dedicated I was, is we were looking at the spinners and he had his shurikens for the spinner, but obviously his shurikens don't really work on the spinner, they were on top of a staff, and that's how you were able to use the shurikens in the spinner game. So when I saw that, I didn't realize there were shurikens, I thought that was a giant mace. And I thought, oh, a mace, that's a really cool and unique weapon, I want that one, so I chose Zane to be my first ninja. And then when I got the set, I realized, oh no, those are two detachable shurikens, and that is so much cooler than a mace. Also, I'm sorry this thing keeps wiggling. <laughs> and then the show came out, and he ended up being my favorite character personality-wise, too. He ended up being a robot, and I was like one of those kids who was obsessed with robots back in the day, so I'm like, wow, this character was made for me. Ice character, robot, shurikens, that's like awesome. So just for that reason, he is stuck as my favorite to this day. Alright, next question comes in from Krusty783. What's up, Krusty? What is your favorite post-movie season and why? I mean, that's pretty easy. It's gotta be probably SOG. Maybe Seabound. Seabound's pretty close. But I think I still do like SOG and Hunted a little bit more than Seabound. But yeah, I mean, come on. It's it's SOG. It's just so well written. The characters are so well done. Harumi is wonderful in those seasons. <laughs> I don't know. What's there to say about SOG that people haven't already said? But yeah, other than that, it would be Seabound. I think Seabound's really good, too. And then finally, we have a question from I Love Ice Cream Now 7897 who, uh, apparently wants me to do their math homework for them. No, but, um, nice try? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to get into a little mini review of a few sets I've gotten recently in a moment. But first, real quick, I want to talk about this Ninjago advent calendar that's on the Keepers of Spinjitzu website. If you guys aren't familiar with Keepers of Spinjitzu, it's this website all about all things Ninjago. They've got lots of fan art and pretty much anything else you can think of over there. But they've put together a Ninjago advent calendar, which will open up every single day until Christmas. And we don't have the full details of what's going to be in here, but I know it's going to be art from different artists. And they mentioned also a few other surprises, which I'm not sure what that means. But yeah, I just think this is a very fun project that a lot of Ninjago fans will be interested in. So I just wanted to share it with all of you. But yeah, if you try to click on any of these now, as it's not December 1st yet, it'll say, how dare you, no peeking. <laughs> But yeah, it's just a fun activity you can log in every morning and see. So I'll have this website linked in the description down below if you guys want to go check out the app encounter for yourself. And then also, real quick, I want to give a shout out to all of my YouTube members helping support the channel. And an extra special thank you to Pyro Pertier and Above, who are the Brick Rookie, Tumble 3D, Nicholas Miller, Craftmaster C223, and Suntan. If you, the viewer, want to become a YouTube member, go click that join button next to the subscribe button. Get a lot of cool perks such as access to the Bricks Behind Discord server, custom emotes, my live streams and comments, occasional sneak peeks to upcoming videos, 
and some other fun stuff. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, become a YouTube member today. But now let's get back to what we were talking about. So in terms of sets I got this month that I haven't done full reviews on, there's not a ton of them for reasons that you will see over the uh, coming weeks. But the one that I did get is the Office set. I bought this at the Lego store probably about a month ago, and then I actually built it on live stream with you guys, and the camera's been a little funny focusing. But yeah, there's just a quick look at that set. There's also the meeting room on the inside, and then Michael's office also slides out, which is pretty cool. Just look at that up a little bit closer, honestly, very well designed. But yeah, the Office set overall I quite like. I think it's maybe a little bit too expensive. $120 seems like a bit much. You do get a lot there, especially like a lot of minifigures, and it is quite large. But I think it definitely should have been $100, not 120 I don't feel ripped off, like I don't regret buying it. I'm glad I did. And because I am a fan of The Office, it's been quite a while since I watched it, so I'm not like as big of a fan as I once was. But I still think it's a good show, and I'm glad this set exists. And now that I have it built up, I'm really glad I chose to get it. The minifigures, I will say, do feel like somewhat of a letdown. Don't get me wrong, I love the sheer variety of them, but I also feel like there's not nearly enough exclusive parts. Like, there is a good number of new face prints and new torso prints, but then some of the torsos are reused between multiple characters in the same set, which I don't know, feels a little bit lame to me. And then more characters actually reuse face prints than I initially thought. So for some characters, the face prints work great, others less, but the main characters at least are quite good, so I guess that's nice to see. But yeah, no, overall I like the set. I would recommend it, but if you're not like an Office super fan, you probably don't need it. Like, it's cool, don't get me wrong, but it is for Office fans. It's probably my favorite of the sitcom sets so far, but at the end of the day, it is just another sitcom set. My ranking of them would probably be Office... Big Bang Theory, Seinfeld Friends. And the reason Seinfeld and Friends are lower, they're both quite good sets and I like them, but they're just such awkward shapes. Big Bang Theory and Office are very rectangular, so they're very easy to store on a shelf. So that's why I like them more than the others. And then the other set I want to talk about is the Favo First Battle Pack, or what's the official name of the set? Favo First Legion Clone Troopers. Now obviously this was a very popular set, or I'm not even sure if it was actually. <laughs> it was a highly requested set, but then it also warmed the shelves for years. It's currently retiring, so if you want to get it, this is probably your last chance. It's sold out on LEGO.com, but I'm sure a lot of local stores probably still have it. But anyway, yeah, I had this sent sent over by the LEGO Ambassador Network earlier this year because I had planned to use it as a visual aid for like a long-form scripted video, and then I never really got around to making that video. I probably still will at some point, but I was going to like review this set in that video, so I thought I might as well talk about them here. And I mean, like, the set's okay. I'm not someone who's like a fan of Clone Wars at all, so I had no like nostalgia connection to this set. I get for a lot of people, Fire First Legion Clone Troopers was like a very exciting and important set for them, but for me, that's not the case. I kind of just like cool minifigures. Also, what in the world is happening with the focus on this camera? Come on, there we go. Hello, look. There's the clone trooper. There's Captain Rex. Look at him. <laughs> but yeah, somebody who's not a clone fan, I am a Star Wars fan, and I do like clone troopers in general. I think they're fun to collect, but I'm not crazy about clones like a lot of people are. This set is like, it was nice to get, but honestly, these builds are kind of nothing to me. Like, the walker's kind of fun. I do kind of like the walker. It's goofy. It kind of reminds me of the Star Wars sets we got in like late 2000s, early 2010s. But then the speeder bike, I'm just, I'm not gonna lie, this thing's just bad. It's just so big and oversized and like really long and weird. I don't know, like, it just doesn't look good to me. It's kind of, can the camera please focus? It only wants to focus on one part of the bike at a time. But yeah, I don't know, this just feels not great to me. It doesn't seem like a speeder bike, it just kind of seems like a, a stick that you whack things with. <laughs> so I know the point of this as the minifigures and not the builds. And I think at least one of the builds is alright, but I pretty much only got this set for the purpose of that video that I was making. If I was not making that video, I really wouldn't have any interest in this set, because, I mean, yeah, it's fine. The clone troopers are cool, I guess. But don't listen to anyone who's like, this is the best LEGO set of all time, because I have seen that every now and then. And it's like, yeah, I mean, it's a good battle pack. If you want to collect these guys, this is a great way to get them. But in terms of actual set quality, it's just whatever. It's a fine LEGO set. Some people will like it, some people won't. But to me, it's just like, meh, whatever. Probably not going to keep these builds together. But the figures are nice to get, at least. And then to round this video off, I guess real quick we can talk about some LEGO news. We had the next minifigure series revealed. I'm getting these from thebrickfan.com, so thank you to the Brickfan for uh, just providing a nice asset so I can look at these real easily. And I think this series is honestly pretty good. There's some stinkers in here, but there's a lot of good ones. I really like the T-Rex costume, actually. Usually not the biggest fan of costume suits, but I think this is a really good one because it's like a costume you see people actually wear in real life every now and then. And I think the headpiece especially is very funny. The aristocrat here is really good. I'm really glad we're getting this dress piece reprinting because it's only come out one minifigure ever, and I just think it's like cool part and I love seeing it again. Torso looks pretty useful too and the hair piece is like really wacky and out there but I love it. Robot Warrior feels a little generic to me but the colors are at least cool. I like the sand green and the pink. The Potter I think is a fantastic minifigure, one of my favorites of the series. Really love the hair piece on her too. Newspaper Kit I think is good, not one I'm super interested in but it's a very well done one. Lots of detail in this minifigure. Orc I actually think is really good. I love like the bottom like jaw piece. I think that's a lot of fun. They're doing that with the Monkey Kid villains this year too. It's a new technique that like I'm not really seeing like I do before. But I actually quite like it. And I hope they do it more going forward. Football referees, 
another one that's like good, not really for me, but cool. No, actually, I am excited for it. I think this one's pretty good. Useful parts here, and I'm glad to see we're getting the soccer ball again. I'm not sure when the last time we got that in sets was. Also, the short sleeves of the watch print's pretty nice to see as well. The falconer, I like. I wish her hairpiece and face print were more interesting. And then the torso and legs are like sort of classic castle-esque, which I think is good. But yeah, I wish they had done something a little bit different with the head. New falcon piece is very cool, though. So yeah, overall, again, I do like this figure. Conservationalist, really great. I love the koala, love the minifigure. Re really like the reuse of the Dustin hairpiece recolored. Yeah, this one's a fantastic one all around. Probably one of the best in the series. Carrot mascot, one of the weaker ones. I mean, he's goofy and fun, but again, just another costume suit. Not my favorite. But at least the accessory is kind of interesting this time around because normally the costume suits come with really boring accessories, if any at all. Brown Astronaut and Space Baby, I love. I mean, come on, Space Baby. How could you not love Space Baby? Brown Astronaut does seem like sort of a cop out. Don't get me wrong, it's nice to get a Brown Astronaut. But they're just like, yeah, we know classic space fans exist, so we're just going to put a classic space minifigure in a minifigure series rather than just like sort of spacing it out like they have been doing. So I kind of wish there was a different way to get this guy, not in a minifigure series, because value wise, this doesn't seem the best. But honestly, the Space Baby makes up for the value of the actual minifigure. So I'd say all around this is a good one. And then this is probably the worst one in the series, the Rockin' Horse Rider. The actual Rockin' Horse piece, amazing, really cool to see. And then the torso on the girl is like, okay, I guess. It is new and exclusive to this character, but it is a fairly generic torso. The thing I don't like about her is no leg print, generic hair piece, and Lego City head just reprinted. That's not a new head piece. So the only new parts here are the torso on that Rockin' Horse. $5 for this seems ridiculous. It's not that any of the parts individually are bad, but it's just they should not be charging $5 for this whole package. Eiffel Tower is another set that was revealed that came out. I don't have much to say about it. It's way too big. Um, <laughs> it's cool for people who have a spot for it, but, like, if I got this, like, I, I was talking to some of my friends about this. Like, when the LEGO Bass Network offers to send us sets, we don't get told what the set is. We just get told the set number and the theme. So if I had been told, oh, hey, we're offering you a LEGO Icon set number, I would have accepted it. But if this thing showed up in my house, I genuinely don't know what I would do. Because, like, don't get, like... It's not that I don't appreciate them sending it to me, but I physically do not have a space in my house to put this. I don't think this would even fit in my recording studio. So I don't know how I would build this. I don't know how I would review it. I don't know where I would put it. So I am, <laughs> I am thankful that the Lego Bass Network did not send me this one because I would not, I would not have been able to do anything with it. <laughs> okay, and I actually think that's it for Lego news because all the other news I've either already covered in their own separate videos or already talked about here. So I think that's about going to do it for this one. Again, thank you everyone for tuning in for this series. If you have any feedback as to anything that has to do with the series, the camera, the subject, the format, anything, anything you'd like to see improve for the next episode, let me know in the comments. Again, going to try to keep this monthly as it is called Mind Monthly now. <laughs> but yeah, so this video, I think it's about going to do it. So thank you for watching, everybody. If you enjoyed, please press like, subscribe to the channel if you're new. I do Lego videos just like this one almost every day, so if you're subscribed, be the first to see them. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.